So I should uh, just qualify that I am a senior researcher, a senior technologist at Stanford University. I am um, an entrepreneur in residence at the H Star Institute at Stanford University. I'm part of the Design X resiliency team at the Center for Design Research at Stanford University. I am a senior fellow at Opus Novum, a consortium of scientists and technologists at NASA Ames, and most recently appointed to a White House State Department joint task force on the nexus of food, water, energy, and waste. Um, we won't talk about the transition just now on the White House, but we can later. Um, that continues, uh, fortunately, for now. Uh, but in any case, um, I have been involved in um, case study research of organic and biodynamic family farms for about 12 years. And uh, prior to that, I've been a serial entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, mostly in video games, um, designing and imagining worlds that make sense. And uh, it's kind of an interesting mix, uh, food, organic food uh, at the neighborhood scale and, uh, and video games. And uh, about five years ago, I was offered a senior level position at Stanford, which I couldn't refuse, and have been involved in, in um, this entrepreneurial uh, background. And things were feeling pretty great until 2013, when I started to see the climate data from the IPCC. And also um, a NASA mathematical equation that predicts civilization collapse based on this climate data. Uh, the 2013 UNCTAD report on the spiraling decimation of food-bearing ecosystems around the world. And then, interestingly, there was a, a study from the Rockefeller Foundation in 2013, which uh, showed that up until 1950, two-thirds of the world's population lived in self-sustaining small communities. And that by 2050, the opposite will be the case. 10 billion people, 75% of which will be living in overcrowded coastal megacities. And at that point, I looked into my son's eyes. At that moment, he was two and a half. And I realized that he was going to ask me 30 years, a question 30 years from now, which was, um, where were you and what did you do? So uh, with that epiphany slash breakdown, I decided to, uh, to make a difference by creating the Tesla of eco-villages. Uh, I got invited to, to join a team at Stanford involved in what's called the Solar Decathlon. And very briefly, the Solar Decathlon is an annual 20 university competition as to who can build the most energy positive homes. And I went to Versailles in the summer of 14, and I like to say in the shadow of a very unsustainable palace, I saw 20 beautiful energy positive homes get built in two weeks on top of a Schneider Electric microgrid, and I realized in that moment that it was possible that we could actually redefine subdivision residential real estate development that's regenerative at the nexus of food, water, energy, and waste. So Regen Villages is the Maslow of hierarchies of needs uh, in your neighborhood. So you have delicious high yield organic food production, which is a combination of uh, aquaponics, aeroponics, um, fish, different species of fish, um, all different kinds of small animal nutritional inputs, and, um, and seasonal gardens, biodynamics, it's all organic, uh, and, uh, and some, some tech enhancements there. And then really living inside uh, Regen Villages, you're within nature, you're not external from it, which is really a big um, case about that. But all of these pieces fit together, if you will, um, that support neighborhoods, that support people living together in community. You don't have to be a farmer, you don't have to be an engineer. This is a spin-off company that we've created that will manage those services. However, we're designing a blockchain-enabled app so that if you want to be involved in the community, in farming or daycare or other things, that you can, and then we take that off your monthly association fee. We build regen villages on top of a regenerative motherboard, where the output of one system is the input of another. It's biomimicry with a little bit of tech enhancement, um, but it works really well. And I'll show you um, a, a brief case of that in a video that I'll show you at the end of the presentation. We take this motherboard around the world with us. We are building our first community here in Europe, uh, in Almira, Netherlands, about 20 minutes east of Amsterdam on certified organic farmland. Uh, this last Friday, I just signed a memo of understanding with um, Lund municipality. So we're coming to Sweden. Um, soon here, I hope, uh, next to the university and, and nearby in this neighborhood. But the idea really being that uh, on certified organic farmland, arable farmland, 
we can house more families while producing more organic food, clean water, clean energy, and mitigating more waste than if you just left that farmland to produce uh, monoculture organic or even for conservation. This is the way forward for residential development. We start uh, near suburban, but our goal is peri-urban and rural uh, for the global south, but we can also learn from what we're doing and bring it back into urban environments, right? So, we are the Tesla of eco-villages. That's sort of this moniker that we've picked up. Um, because we have sensors embedded in the substrate of our community that get shared to the cloud, and then uh, communities in similar climate zones will learn from this data and then autonomously improve themselves. So we use robots as a way to increase thriving for, for families, and that's, I think, a very exciting opportunity, um, as opposed to the other idea of robots either taking your job or killing us. So I think that's a better alternative. My, my, my opinion. Um, so again, what we're doing is we're marrying uh, energy positive homes. So we have a wonderful architectural uh, framework partner out of Copenhagen called Effect that has been uh, thinking with us on this idea of a house inside of a house. So it's a house inside of a greenhouse envelope. Uh, this has been proven already at KTH in Stockholm. Uh, it works quite well. It preserves the warm season, and then during the summer we take that excess heat and we bring it under the ground with a low energy pump, and uh, we, store, we use the earth as a heat sink um, as a battery. So the battery is a combination of boreholes and the earth as a heat sink temperature differential we can also generate power from, and again, it's biomimicry. We're using the earth um, and the systems of the earth to, um, to make living very comfortable. And uh, we incorporate that energy generation and storage uh, into grid tie with microgrids. So basically, we are um, using a grid tie as an asset class. We generate more power than the neighborhood needs. We sell that back to the utility. That is in a benefit to, to the residents who live there. The same thing with the organic food. We overproduce more food than the community needs. Well, guess what? That's an asset class. So now we've got energy and we've got food. Those are both uh, kind of opportunities to help people realize mortgage payments that uh, the community itself can generate. So, um, and this is my background really, is primarily organic food, healthy eating. And, um, and recently, um, within the last two years, we've been doing research and we have filed two provisional patents on this idea of closed loop organic uh, biodigesters. So we use uh, black soldier fly larvae and aquatic worms to digest uh, food and small animal waste. And then that gets fed back to those systems and that's when you have the closed loop. We're also working with the European Science uh, Agency, ESA, uh, on this very same topic. Uh, in terms of uh, water waste cycle, it's the same thing. These are all asset classes. We reduce burdens on municipal governments. We have almost no effluent going to the sewers. We don't need a sewer tie. Um, we actually take the liquid and turn it into phosphorus and nitrogen. We turn the solids you know, into fertilizer and inert plastic. Um, it's all there. It's all the technologies are there and the requisite to, to use. So um, part of the work we're doing now at Stanford in, combination of some work we're doing with Microsoft in researching the Regen OS, the operating system that will oversee all of these systems and at the same time make the quantified neighborhoods really come to life. So that's ongoing right now. Something we're very interested, by the way, in partnering with other universities. So some good ideas on that front. And then the quantified neighborhood is with these shared partners from um, all around the world, very large uh, industry partnerships and, and governments. And again, the, the main idea is uh, to move rapidly. We want to redefine the way municipalities think about developing and fast tracking in these exclusion zones and make these prototypes come to life for the benefit of families around the world. So we have a pipeline of projects. Uh, we start in, in, in Almira in the Netherlands. We're also doing one concurrently at Powder Mountain in Utah in the US. Then we've got um, four projects that we're gonna use EU regional and structural funds. We are a Dutch holding company, so we are an EU entity. I'm so glad that I decided to do that last year. Um, and, uh, and then we use sovereign wealth funds to go around the world. So sovereign wealth funds that are transiting from fossil fuels into what? So we think this is the best way for them to invest. There's a portfolio of real estate asset-backed investments that benefit the planet and have knowledge transfer. 
So Regent Villages, um, the Tesla Vico Villages. I'd like to show you just a, a brief video, um, which is a prototype lab in, um, in East Palo Alto. It's about a mile and a half from campus at Stanford, um, where we're digesting food waste from Google's headquarters, uh, tons of it, and, um, and that's feeding our systems, and it's also feeding the neighborhood. So I appreciate your help with that. Regen villages, integrated villages that power and feed self-reliant families. To help people become more self-sufficient in three areas. One is waste management, that they process their own waste. Second is food production and third is energy production. Different prototypes being productionized and being used in more large-scale operations. To reduce waste and increase productivity at the home site. We're currently prototyping systems that will reach these goals to help other people live more sustainably with as little disruption to their existing lifestyle as possible. The aquatic worms has the ability to sustainably feed the fish, feed the chickens, uh, and they are a super source of protein. We create a new composting system, we heat up a chamber to create the perfect conditions for the black soldier flies. This, this is why we're doing the compost burritos, to provide an environment for these super composters to do the work. The bacteria will do half of the work, and these guys will do the rest, and they're amazing. The, the things that are being prototyped here and the speed that they're being prototyped is going to change the game uh, for sustainability, for urban agriculture, for alternate energy. The inputs and the outputs for complete organic ecosystems are here. We can incorporate that into Regen Villages at global scale. So I'd just like to say that on that site what's happening is the externality of that, the output of that, is nutrient-rich topsoil, which we're spreading around the neighborhood and actually growing food for the neighbors, giving them a surplus of extra food and extra money. And the other thing I just want to end up on by saying is that uh, we introduced Regen Villages last summer at the Venice Biennale for Architecture and had a small press conference and we went absolutely viral around the world. We've had 22 and a half million hits to our website. We've had over 14,000 emails in the last four months. Um, we've had 3,100 families who signed up for the first 100 homes. So um, I think we're onto something and we'd love for you to join us. Thanks so much.